Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. This is pulmonary lecture number three, breath sounds, nursing interventions and breath sounds. So taken from my sticky note on following nursing camp and Instagram, social media and Facebook and this sticky note here. Okay, we're going to get into it and let's get into the structure first. All right, so the first thing is on the structure and when we're talking about uh, breath sounds. Well, when you have breath sounds in a NCLEX question, um, it's all on location and an assessment. So our first thing is our assessment and structure. So the the top part of the lungs has a trachea here, and trachea is where you're going to hear the stridor, stridor sounds. And stridor sounds are always acute. They're acute now. So if you ever have a patient with stridor, it's acute. And a lot of times you see post strider whenever there's been a uh, intubation or something like that, or an esophageal um, uh, scope or a TEE, transesophageal um, uh, echo. So the problem is, is that this pressure on this um, trachea can cause um, spasms in strider. And that's acute. You would want to notify the doctor for any time you hear strider. Also, with pediatric patients, you can get strider, which is in the form of croup. And that's a pediatric lecture. I don't cover pediatrics in this lecture. All right, so strider is always acute. The next one is uh, wheezes. They're best heard on, on um, expiration. And wheezes are still upper airway. And wheezes are important because of the action is usually wheezes are relative to asthma. And please see my COPD asthma um, lecture where I cover more about that. And the treatment for that is generally bronchodilators. Of course, the patient will always be in high follows position. So whenever you have breath sounds and they're abnormal, you put them in the high follows position and then you assess. And the way that we assess is that we assess the... Um, the uh, first intercostal spaces and then we go to the uh, the uh, third fifth then the sixth and that's on the front and then you'll do it on the back and we work in a different zigzag motion now the interesting thing about that this is taught differently everywhere so um, there's no rule, rule of standard Generally, what I teach is, is that if you have a patient that's laying in bed and you hear um, bad lung sounds on the front, well, that's definitely more acute than hearing them on the back. You can always generally will hear the boat coming on the back. But if, if, if you heard bad lung sounds on the front, that patient is more acute because um, you'll always hear them more first on the back. Next thing is, so strider is acute, um, and generally because of esophageal uh, spasms or laryngeal spasms. Um, wheezes are acute for asthma, generally, and it's upper airways, and bronchodilators are given. Bronchi is also called rails and pops, so it kind of sounds like crisp, crispy pops, popping sounds. Um, generally with that, we kind of think of... Um, Turn, cough, deep breathe, T, C, D, B, with rails and bronchi. They, they have junk in their, in their bronchial tree that needs to be mobilized. So they might get um, bronchodilators to open them up in an expectorant, like something like um, guafenicin or mucinex or something like that. So they're best heard on this expiration bronchi, and they're generally relieved by turning, coughing, and deep breathing. So that's a number one nursing intervention. So the assessment would you, is that you hear bronchi or rails, and then you turn, the intervention is turn, cough, deep breathe to expectorate um, that, uh, that um, sputum. The next is uh, crackles. Now, crackles are best heard on inspiration. They don't clear. That's the interesting thing. Please see my COPD lecture on, um, on CHF and also bronchitis. And crackles is um, problematic, and those patients have fluid 
um, in the wrong spot. And it's outside. And what you need to do is give that patient generally um, Lasix. Uh, because coughing is not going to clear crackles. All right, so you either give Lasix or you might give, um, uh, not Lasix, um, you might give high flow oxygen to uh, push that um, O2 up. What else? Diminished. Well, diminished are, um, you can't really hear them. So they're faint. And diminished uh, lung sounds could be consolidation. And consolidation comes from uh, infections. Um, infections, and they're generally treated with antibiotics. So consolidations are treated with antibiotics. Uh, turn cough and deep breathing is not really going to help because it's so far down. And diminished is sometimes called um, with absent. And absent is always acute. Okay. Absent is acute because you can't hear it. So it could be a hemothorax, a pneumothorax, um, or just diminish that has resulted into a collapsed um, area consolidation that's so opaque. And that's a like whited out or odds or something like that. And I cover that in my pulmonary lectures. Please see those. So some general things to think about when we're looking at respiratory assessment and breath sounds. You know, breath sounds are very specific to the location that you're looking at, where where it is, whether it's in the trachea or the upper part where you'll see strider or, um, um, or wheezes in the upper part. You know, strider and wheezes are two different things. Strider is more acute than wheezes. Wheezes are still acute, and it's usually evaluation with bronchodilators. Rock, ronchi and also rails are generally turn, cough, deep breathe, um, and also antibiotics possibly because if those are not turn, cough, and deep breathing, that's why we give them incentive spirometers. Incentive spirometers can cause atelectasis, and atelectasis is a condition that means that you basically have no breast sounds and the collapse uh, alveoli. Um, I talk a little bit more about that when we get to COPD, emphysema, bronchitis, and asthma. And this is just a general overview. So when you have lung sounds on the uh, on the test questions, you really want to look at, you know, um, what are you hearing? And where's the location? Um, whether it's you know, bronchovesicular or vesicular, which is more out here. Bronchial is right here. Bronchial vesicular, upside down V here um, and that's kind of what they're talking about um, strider is generally never down lower it's always higher it's a higher pitch sound well that's about it that's a general overview this is camp and this is nursing camp with um, nursingcamp.com I can be found on social media I was covering my uh, sticky note on on the um, pulmonary assessment and we'll see you next time